Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about probably my favorite rock in my entire collection. It is this iron carbonate called the Gunflint Formation. You may be like, well, Steve, uh, nice gray rock. Yeah, well, this isn't the whole rock. <laughs> but let's start with this. I want you to look at this a little bit. And it does fizz with hydrochloric acid, but barely. This rock, if you Google Gunflint Formation Ontario, you're going to get an age pop-up of about 1.88 billion years old. It actually began being deposited probably about 1.85, no, sorry, 1.87, sorry, 1.87 billion years ago is actually when it more than likely started getting deposited. Now, we know when this stopped being deposited because there is actually a datable unit on top of this rock and no it is not attached to this rock that's not what i'm going to show you it's the Sudbury ejecta and that is dated exactly at 1.850 billion years ago so 1850 million uh 1850 million plus or minus only like 1 million years so we got a pretty good date on that it extends basically, it's the ejecta from the Sudbury impact, and it extends all the way into Minnesota. This is not from Minnesota. This is from the Thunder Bay, Ontario area. And I'm not going to tell you exactly where this is. Now, the Gunflint Iron Range, for those of you in Minnesota you might be familiar with, this it, rock is more of a salacious carbonate with iron in it. As you go up towards Thunder Bay, the actual iron in it which was mined um in minnesota it, it, it becomes a lot less and i keep having cats trying to get on me right now <laughs> but this white stuff is not calcite it's chert a pretty conf or not chert uh quartz i'm pretty confident of that i did test this rock at one point but it, i wasn't keeping track then but I do know there's a little bit of silica in it. It's not pure carbonate. And it is, um, it, the carbonate in it is mostly dolomitic. It's not mostly uh, lime, calcite. Now, in other parts of the formation, you'll find stromatolites. And there's even some shaley units. But for the most part in Thunder Bay, it looks like this here. Okay, and there's my finger for comparison. Now, so from about 1.8, well, for, from 1.85 to about 1.87 billion years ago, this was being deposited. I forget its thickness. It's not immensely thick, but it's thick. It is kind of equivalent in age to most of the iron ranges in the Upper Peninsula in age, not in lithology. I keep getting cats here. Come on, guys. Just let me finish this. Come on, buddy. Let me finish it. I'll pay attention to when I'm done, okay? Um, you can see here, too, you can see some reddish iron staining. But what makes this gray, unlike most modern carbonate rocks, is not organic bits. It's iron. And so this tends to be a little heavier than most carbonate rocks. But there's something I want to show you on this side. Isn't that pretty? This is seam agate. This was a bedding plane. See, there's bedding. So this was the top of a bed. Now, the outcrop, I'm not telling you where it came from. I'm just going to say Thunder Bay area. And unfortunately the outcrop is no longer exposed. They did some highway work and they covered it uh, on Trans-Canada route. But what you can see here, this is some of the source rock for Lake Superior Agate. It's not the only source rock, but it is one of them. And the white here is almost all quartz. There's, I think there's a couple isolated calcites, but the vast majority of it like 99% of it or close to that, is white quartz. And you can see the red jasper here. Now, when this was exposed, the top part was no longer visible. 
So I don't know if that was more iron concentrated or not. But here you can see we have a lot of iron in it here near this. Okay, so this was a bedding blame. Now, was this altered stromatolites or something like that? No, I mean, stromatolites don't show up anywhere else in this rock or anywhere else in that old outcrop. So this is just probably a little cavernous area. It could have been um, that where the jasper precipitated out upon or there was more iron up here. I don't know. But, you know, th this rock itself is not very vascular or buggy. There's a couple of voids in it, but not a lot. So it's very compact. It, it is slightly metamorphosed. So te technically, this would be a marble. Technically. But, yeah, mo you almost never hear anyone describe it like that. But technically, it is. And you can see here on the bottom of this bed, you have a lot of hematite. This is almost all iron oxides, and I believe, if a memory serves, it was, or it is hematite, it's not geotite or something like that. But um, anyway, I just wanted to show you this rock, and I've had it, I picked it up in 2012, that's when they were redoing the Trans-Canada route over by Thunder Bay. And so I've had this thing for 13 years, wow, time just flies, and... Yeah, I just think it's really interesting. Oh, and the vugs you do have are filled with uh, quartz and red jasper around them. So this might have just been one very large vug in the rock or small cavern. But like I said, when this was an outcrop, this part was gone. Uh, we had several pieces of this. Oh, yeah, a piece of it sticking out here. And we cut it and gave it away to some some really cool old guy who I hope is still alive. But he was he was in his early nineties last time I talked to him, so I don't I don't think he is probably. But anyway, I just wanted to show you this. That's it. If you guys want, ask me any questions or comments, and I do hope that you uh, learn something.